diagnosis of UTI in children. So first of all, screening test is urine analysis. It will show the presence of significant pyuria. By itself, significant pyuria is not diagnostic, but it gives clues. It is a screening test. It has about 70 to 80 percent sensitivity in telling that probably UTI is present. So what is significant pyuria? Again, definition. More than 10 WBCs per millimeter cube in an uncentrifuged urine sample or more than 5 WBCs per high power feed in a centrifuge urine sample is called a significant pyuria. It is a positive screening test for UTI. But as I said, significant pyuria without bacteria urea is not sufficient to make a diagnosis of UTI. Now, what are the alternative screening methods? Slightly costly, but they have a better sensitivity. Overall, modest sensitivity specificity, but better than pyuria. So they are dipsticks. They employ two agents, leukocyte esterase and nitrite. Nitrates and nitrite formation is performed by most of the gram-negative bacteria which cause UTI and so they will be positive for these. So nitrite reduction is unreliable in two scenarios, enterococcal infection and increased urinary frequency. These dipstick based methods particularly which employ both leukocyte esterase and nitrite, both of them are involved, they have a sensitivity more than 90% and specificity somewhere in the range of 70 to 85%. Now coming to the best diagnostic method, urine culture. Now what is the, uh, there are, there have been certain guidelines to define when do you call it as a significant positive urine culture. That depends upon how urine has been collected. So let us form a small table to understand here. On one side I would write the method of urine collection. Then I would write what is the criteria. Now, the first method of urine collection is suprapubic aspiration. Suprapubic aspiration is an invasive way. It is a painful way, not performed in majority of patients. But if somebody asks you what is the most sterile way of collecting urine, it is suprapubic aspiration. Not very frequently done, but it is the most sterile way of collecting urine. What is the criteria? Criteria is very simple because it is the most sterile way any microorganism colony cultured is, is considered to be significant provided it is a single microorganism. Single microbe ka ki colonies should be cultured. It should not be a mixed flora. Mixed flora means one is staph, one is E. coli. It can be a co contamination also. So it should be a single microbe or single species colonies getting cultured. Any number of microorganism colonies getting cultured is considered to be positive for significant positive for urine culture. The second method of urine collection is catheterization. You put a Foley's catheter or there is an indwelling Foley's catheter and you take sample from that. Uh, the criteria says now there is a chance of contamination. So criteria is more than 5 into 10 raised to power 4 colony forming units or simply colonies per ml of a single organism. If they are found, we say it is significant positive urine culture. If there are features, it is UTI. And then we have midstream clean catch sample. When you do midstream clean catch sample, you discard the first few drops when the child is freely passing urine. In male children, you need to retract the prepuce and then you collect in a, in a sterile container and then close it, send for culture immediately. If you find that more than 10 raised to power 5 colony forming unit per ml of a single organism are obtained, it is a significant culture. It shows significant bacteria urea and if there are features present, we call it as UTI in the patient. So it has a sensitivity of 99% suprapubic aspiration in detecting UTI, catheterization sensitivity is about 95% and midstream clean catch sample it is between 90 to 95%. And that is why urine culture is the diagnostic thing. It is also important because urine culture will also tell you about the culture sensitivity pattern. You initially start with empirical therapy, later on you can shift to a focused uh, antibiotic of choice. Now Nelson says a few points. First of all, microscopic hematuria is common in acute cystitis, but microhematuria alone does not suggest UTI, right? WBC cast suggests renal involvement, but in practice these are rarely seen. If the child is asymptomatic and the urine analysis result is normal, it is unlikely that there is UTI. 
and food. If the child is symptomatic, a UTI is possible even if urine analysis result is negative and so a urine culture should always be ordered. In other words, urine culture along with sign and symptom is diagnostic of UTI. This is indirect way of saying in sophisticated lines the same concept that I just told you. Now what are the other investigations? Blood tests are sometimes performed but they are non-specific. They simply tell you that there is infection present. So blood tests may show rise in the WBC count. So leukocytosis will be there. Some patients may have raised CRP as well as procalcitonin. But these are again found to be non-specific. And imaging studies you will do, you will, you will perform in case you are suspecting a acute pyelonephritis or complications related to UTI. So imaging studies are only needed in complicated UTI, not in simple UTI. And uh, you can do ultrasound KUB. Ultrasound KUB will show the presence of upper renal tract involvement that is acute pyelonephritis. In certain patients, if you are suspecting a renal abscess or perinephronic collection, you can also go in for CT scan can be considered. But initial test imaging will always be ultrasound KU.